Hello guys, welcome back to another episode of Rip Rap Outdoors. Today, instead of fishing, we're going to be doing something a little different. We're going to make ourselves a fluid bed. When we first started out painting our jigs, we were just using this right out of the can. We were just heating our lead up and dipping it into the powder paint. And what we were finding was is that we were getting a very uneven coating onto it. And when we were baking them in the oven, we were tending to get some drips and it wasn't a very nice looking finish when it was all said and done. So we decided to do some research on the interweb and we discovered and came across the homemade fluid bed. So um, they're pretty simple to make. So today we're going to actually make one real quick and at the end we'll show you kind of how we have our system set up for what we do when we paint our jig heads. So looking at the parts. So you need some airline for uh, fish tanks. So just some regular airline. You need a control valve, a T uh, splice, a pair of scissors, a piece of regular old copy paper, a pen. You need your air pump. So in, you specifically want one with two outlets on it. <clears throat> so that'll give you enough air volume to run your fluid bed. You need a two inch test cap, a two inch PVC plug, and we like the ones with the flat bottom because that's what's going to be the base of your fluid bed. You need a solvent union, so it just comes apart. So it'll be your air chamber and your paint chamber will be in those two layers. You need a three and a half inch piece of two inch PVC, a drill bit with a 730 seconds drill uh, bit in it, some five minute epoxy, and that's all we need to get started. So we will, uh, so let me shift some stuff around here and we'll go through the process of assembling our fluid bit. All right, so the first thing that we're gonna focus on, we're gonna make the bottom. So you want the, of the solvent union, you want the part that unscrews, that's, that's gonna be your top. So your threaded part is your bottom. So the first thing you're gonna do is just take your, your plug and you're just gonna put it in there and just give it a good press. So it doesn't have to be overly tight. You could glue all this if you wanted to, but it's not really that necessary. It's low pressure. It's not gonna blow apart onto you. It's gonna seal it up enough with just a pressure fit that you're not gonna have to worry about it. <clears throat> so there's your, your bottom piece done. So then you're going to take your three and a half inch piece that you cut and you're going to put that into the top piece. And this one, you want to make sure that you really get it pressed down on there good. Put some weight behind it. So you want to try, I don't know if you can see it, you want to try to get this gap all the way closed. So I'm going to stick it on the floor real quick and just step on it. Here we go, it popped into place. So now you can see it's a nice tight fit around the bottom and that's critically important because you don't want your paint to get down underneath that lip because then it'll mess up how the air interacts with it so so that's your, your top and your bottom so pretty easy so in your bottom piece so where the air is going to go so you're just going to drill your hole through it and i'm going to put i'm going to screw this part on it so i got something extra to hold on to as i'm drilling so you're just going to take your drill bit and you're just going to drill a hole right through both pieces. Just like that and that's where we're going to end up putting our air tube. Okay so your air tube that's coming out of there, so we'll take our air line. And basically all I'm going to do is I'm just going to take probably you know maybe a 10 inch piece of your air line and I'm just going to snip that off for the, for the first part. And that's what's going to fit through your 732nd hole right there. And it's going to go, go in there. And I usually, you know, if it's inside of it, three quarters of an inch or so, that's plenty. It doesn't have to be perfect. It can be right on the side. It doesn't really matter. I usually just stick mine in a little bit. So we're going to epoxy the, the airline into this. And you could go to, you know, one of the home improvement stores and you could get uh, brass valve that they use for like refrigerator water systems and you can put that in here and, and have your control valve right here um, it adds a little bit of cost to it and we don't find it 
we didn't we didn't do it that way. We wanted to save as much money as possible, so so we just we're just going to epoxy it in. So we take our two part epoxy. And we'll just squirt a little bit of both parts out. You don't need a lot. Cap back on. Set that aside. So we'll just stir that up. And stir it up nice and good so that it's going to activate. So once you got it good and stirred, we're going to take the, the air tube that's going to go in and about a half inch down from where it's going to go in, we're just going to, we're just going to put a nice thick bead of epoxy around it. And then we're going to take it and we're going to put it in the hole. And as we're putting it in past that epoxy, we're just going to twist it. Get that epoxy to spread really good through there. And you can see that it formed up around the side, so it's just going to help seal it off. And then we're just going to set that aside and we're going to let that, we're going to let that cure. So then moving into our, into our pump. So what we're going to do is we're going to come off the pump into this T for the one outlet. And then we're going to put another piece out to the other part of the T and then from the T it'll go to our control valve and then from our control valve that'll hook into the piece that we just epoxied in the uh, fluid bed, the bottom of the fluid bed. So we'll just cut another piece of airline. You can do about, I'm just, I, there's no good measurements here. You just kind of go, this is probably a 12 inch piece. So I'm going to stick that into the the first outlet and again it doesn't matter which outlet you do first and then I'll put it on one side of the T slide it on so then I'll just kind of eyeball a quick measure with this out here of where I want Let's get this out of the way my airline's all messed up so I'm just going to put this part on here on the second airline, stretch this one out, figure out about where it wants to be. So I want about that much. Again, it's not critical. And I'm going to put that on the other side. It just helps keep everything nice and tight. You could put a little zip tie or a piece of tape around it to keep them there. And then we need another little piece to go between the two so just cut off so I'm just gonna cut off one more chunk so this is probably five inches put it on the final end of the T and it's gonna go into our control valve and then from our control valve will go into the input to our fluid bed. So that's so that's all we got going on there. So the next uh, the final part that we have to do okay so we have the bottom is going to be our air chamber, the top is going to be our paint chamber. So we obviously need some kind of filter in between here, otherwise it just won't work. It's just going to blow paint everywhere and we don't want that. So that's where the piece of copy paper comes in. So if you just take the top of your fluid bed and just trace that out, and you get to use your mad kindergarten skills. Cut out your, your circle, and this is just normal copy paper. No, not special. Um, there's some good videos on YouTube where you can search fluid bed filters, and there's people that have done tests of different material, and they actually found in their tests that the copy paper was one of the best for results. So you just put your your paper on, set your top on it. And then connect your solvent joint. 
And there's your fluid bed. Okay, so now that we got our fluid bed fully assembled, you just take your uh, your powder paint and very slowly just dump it into your fluid bed that you have your copy paper filter into. And with this two inch PVC with a three and a half inch top piece, we pretty much put the whole can of powder in it. It works okay. So then all you, all you have to do is plug in your, your, well you want to make sure that your control valve is all the way closed. That's important. If it's open, you are liable to make a mess and then Mrs. Rip Rap would be upset. So then once you got your paint in the fluid bed, you just turn your control valve slowly and you'll start to see the air start to come in and you'll be able to watch your powder paint move around and it'll rise up pretty good into your inside of your your top piece and then once you get it to where it's moving like water and doing a nice boil then that's where you want it to be and at this point you would just heat up your jig head or whatever you're trying to powder paint using some pliers get it hot dip it in pull it out um, one of the keys is, is that after you do that, you just want to make sure you take a toothpick, clean out the eye hole, because if you bake this Protec powder paint um, in, the, in the eyelets covered of your, of your hook, it is very difficult, if not near impossible, to get it cleared. So, um, so when you're done, you can turn it off. And the reason why we bought the little two inch test cap is you can just Put it on top of it and it just keeps it from spilling so <clears throat> that's all there is to building yourself a fluid bed the most expensive part of this whole process is the air pump um, we bought this one for about 16 dollars at walmart and the rest of it was maybe ten dollars at at lowell's is all we paid for for the components so, all right so now we're going to show you a little bit closer look at how we have our fluid bed set up so we have three different fluid beds that we've built and we're going to actually build one more and we have a four valve controller that we bought at Petco. Um, so same system coming out of the same system coming out of the air pump with the hookup and it just goes into the four valve unit and then we can control each one of the different fluid beds with these control valves and run whatever one we want. So. All right, so I hope that you liked this video and you found it informative and that maybe you'll go out and try to build your own fluid bed. Like I said, they're not very expensive to make and once you make one, you can very easily upgrade and have as many fluid beds with all the different colors that you want. But if you did like this video, please take time to hit the subscribe button. If you haven't taken the time to watch this video or this video, please do that as well. We would really appreciate it. Like I always say, get out in the water and keep reeling them in. Until next time.